I'm Danny, and this is Asha. We're two Kiwis who, after five years living in London, decided to head home the slow way. We bought a 36-foot sailing boat, Bacchus, built a little rowing and sailing dinghy, Piwaka Waka, and headed towards the horizon. These are our adventures. Hola. It was our last day in Tenerife, so we decided to add to the hundreds of murals along the marina wall from other yachties that had sailed across the Atlantic before us. So it's day one of the Atlantic crossing. We have slipped our lines off. We did say that you wouldn't decline the We can see Tenerife. Down, so Behind us. Yeah, we're kind of, are we reaching or are we going down one? And yeah. the boys are trying out the new hydrovane. Right. It seems to be working quite well. It might bring us down a little bit more actually. Ben's got it in a nice comfortable position already. Hard work's all done now, now it's relaxing time. Got a little bit of sail up. And this is going to be us for the next three to four weeks. Happy days. Happy with the new toy, actually? I'm really happy with Flo. She's doing well. We're just figuring her out at the moment. Um, playing with the different settings and trying to get her driving the boat nicely, but it's so cool. It's such a cool piece of engineering. It's, it's incredibly simple, but quite a complicated bit of kit as well. But what it does is so simple and it just does it beautifully. It's really cool. It just takes the, the energy from the wind there uh, to know where to steer and to power the, uh, the rudder. So whereas the autopilot uses a computer and a hydraulic ram, this one just uses the wind. It's really, really cool. And what we've done here is we've just tied off our steering wheel so that our rudder's not moving. You can see that. That's pretty tight and we're just working off the rudder up the boat. Doing a great job. So off we went. It was a strange feeling to have all the jobs done and nothing left to do but sail. The wind was right behind us so we dropped the main and hoisted a second headsail to sail wing on wing. Ben fulfilled his promise of entertaining his crew and we watched the first of many sunsets full of anticipation about what the next few weeks would bring. <laughs> so I've been told I need to uh, introduce myself to the camera. So my name is Ben. I'm also affectionately known as Bilge Pump from time to time. I met uh, Danny and Asher over in... <laughs> I didn't you meet you over there. I grew up with Asher as a kid in the Bay of Islands and I also played with Danny and Asher in uh, London for a couple of years back in 2015-16. So I've flown over from New Zealand to join them for this leg of the, the trip, the Atlantic crossing. I've forgotten what I was going to say, all the funny stuff I was going to say. Um, Danny's asked me to tell you all what skills I'm going to be bringing to the, to the boat. That's a pretty easy answer. I do a bit of sailing, a bit of racing back in the Auckland. And I'm a grinder, so I just turn turn the handles, you know, on the boat. So I'll be I'll be doing that on this boat. We don't have one of those, Ben. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? What was that? We don't have a grinder on you, the boat. You don't have any grinding pedestals. No. On the boat. No, we don't. It's not that type of boat. What the hell am I going to be doing for three weeks? Here, grind this. Coffee. What's this? Coffee. Grind the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Well, luckily I'm a man of many talents, so I can uh, provide entertainment for the crew to keep morale up. 
And now I'm going to cut to a shot with me playing a guitar. What else funny could I do? I've also uh, purchased one of these, um, which I'm told can take fo photos of the boat as we as we go along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, I'm really looking forward to the crossing and hanging out with these two for three or four weeks in a, a very small space. Also, a quick uh, shout out to Tommy Ralph and Anya McCarthy who have given me this personal locator beacon that's going to be on my person at all times, which apparently saves my life if I fall overboard. Thanks for the vote of confidence, guys. Well, we're underway. We are. On our way to the Caribbean, this is the first full day of the crossing. Um, so we've uh, we've got El Hero, uh, which is the westernmost island of the Canaries, a beam of us, uh, and we've got a really nice 20 knot northeasterly right behind us. Uh, so we're just driving straight downwind. Got two headsets out, wing on wing. Uh, we're not bothering with the main because it's just too much work in the swell. Uh, and the new hydrovane behind me. Lawrence the machine uh, is doing a fantastic job uh, of managing this You can see her working away there. How are we feeling team? Good, We've got full bellies. Yeah. Just watch the sunset. End of day two. End of day two, yeah. There's no one, no one anywhere to be seen around us. Just us and the big blue. We are all alone. It's pretty nice. So we're just flying along out here. It's uh, it's the morning of day three. Uh, and Bacchus is just eating up the miles. Um, wind's picked back up again, we've got a solid 20 something uh, knots right behind us. Um, lots of new creaks and squeaks that are developing in the cabin. Um, Bacchus is quite heavy and um, there is still a cross swell which is throwing us around a bit so I'm going to go to work with a torch uh, tomorrow and try and find some of these squeaks and eliminate them because uh, it's actually quite hard to sleep down below, it's very loud. Um, but Great fun, um, exciting stuff, a little bit of adrenaline, and um, yeah, we're making great progress towards the Caribbean, so really happy so far. Hello, this is my bunk, down below, it has a little leak up, so I can't pull out, see? Ooh, that's clever. Danny, off. Danny's off watch. Danny's off watch, Ben's off watch, I'm in charge, and uh, I'm just watching the Florence drive the boat. Yeah, we're just watching the Florence drive the boat, she's the one doing all the work. It's great. Yeah, she's doing a great job. 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 Yeah, she's doing a great in the kitchen cooking dinner. <laughs> what are you cooking? Cooking nachos. A bit of salsa. Starting off with some fresh mints. Ooh, that's good. Thanks to the fridge installed on Bacchus. Look at that. Still full of food. We're doing all right. Got a little bit of food left in our hammocks. Got quite a few days to go. What's happening out here? Oh. <laughs> Just uh, a few, few exercises with Ben's giant rubber band. I've got no idea what I'm doing, but this one hurts my muscles, so it must be good. Oh, that's, that's great. Ah. What do we got? Slaving away right way down there. Yeah. Ben's you. knocking it out of the park with nachos. That's pretty good. Mm.
This is just the cruisiest sailing I've ever done. Um, I've not touched the sails for, what are we now, five days out? I've not touched the sails for five days, um, aside from just moving the halyards and the sheets a couple of inches each day to protect them from chafe. Uh, it's not steered since we left Tenerife for five days, the Hydrovane's just done it all. Um, we've hardly even had to adjust course. We've um, we moved the Hydrovane a couple of degrees every now and again, um, but that's about it. And I mean, right now we're doing seven, eight, nine knots while we surf down these waves. And uh, both Danny and Ben are fast asleep, and I'm on watch. And there's really nothing to do except just enjoy the speed and enjoy the sunshine and. Just enjoy the, the sound and the feeling of the boat just zipping along uh, downwind. It's, it's fantastic. It's so cool. A bit challenging. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to cook a meal in. So we're having poor man's ramen. It's basically just two minute noodles with some vegetables and some curry paste. The sea is all over the place at the moment. Oh man, it's so hard. day seven um, and I'm feeling really rubbish, really shit. I have done for the last few days. I wore a patch for uh, the first three days and it felt really good and um, you know I was cooking meals and down below doing stuff and having a good time and <laughs> days four and five I don't know if I still had a bit of the drugs in my system or um, the sea was just a bit more settled but I felt pretty good then too. And then the last two days have just been absolute pants. Um, sort of confined to the three by two meter cockpit out here. Can't go down below. I just feel really sick. Um, and I just don't know if it's because the drugs have worn off or because it's the sea state. It's just a mess. It's like a washing machine out here. We've got waves coming from three different directions just throwing us around all over the show. So I'm really hoping that hope maybe I get my sea legs in the next couple of the days or otherwise I'll have to resort to some more drugs but for now I'm just out here sitting on the rail trying not to vomit watching the flying fish a couple of really shitty days actually the Atlantic been daydreaming about having a remote <laughs> so I can just press pause just for one minute I just I just want to be still for one goddamn minute Yeah, it's not a great day today. Had a bit of seasickness and uh, we're just having real trouble getting back us to go in the direction that we want, which is it's a bit embarrassing because it's downwind. It's, uh, it's not a difficult point of sail, but we're really struggling with the waves and just keeping her on course. And we've done quite a bit of damage to our little number four headsail as a result. We have lots of jibes with it. So I'm now gonna try and patch it back together. I don't really know what I'm doing though. How are you feeling today Ben? Oh, not too bad. I've got the easy shift today so I've had a good sleep last night. And just uh, yeah, trying out a few sail configurations to try and get the boat running well. But it's, I suppose it's good we came across this because we wouldn't have taken this jib down otherwise. Good point. Now talk to me about um, these socks here. How oh, many days have you been wearing them for? Oh, these are my lucky sailing socks, you see, so it's a ritual thing. I can't take them off for the whole journey. That's my story. Can you make sure that when you do take them off, you are miles away from me? <laughs> They'll be hanging in your cabin. <laughs> so gross.
Despite the seasickness, the crew got to work sewing leather patches onto the sail so we could keep using it without completely destroying it. So today's actually my birthday, would you believe it? I'm, uh, I'm 33 years old and we're a third of the way across the Atlantic. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a new location for me for celebrating a birthday. Um, but we had a really yummy uh, cooked breakfast this morning with a little bit of bacon that we'd stashed away in the fridge. And uh, Danny's making homemade pizzas for lunch. And we've even got a couple of beers in the fridge uh, for later on. Um, weather is much the same as it's been for the last eight days. We've got about 20 knots right behind us. Uh, and Bacchus is just noodling her way downwind uh, with the pulled out Genoa and the little uh, number four Hetzel. So this is the first birthday pizza going in. Called Spicy Atlantic. Woohoo! It's good. Here it is. Here we go. Birthday lunch. Luckily, the crew seemed to have perked up just in time for Ash's birthday, so we had our first Atlantic beers to celebrate. Well, was on night shift last night. So I've slept in a bit. I just jammed my toe. Danny's just stubbed her toe. It's okay, carry on. <laughs> that explains the shaking camera. <laughs> I'm just having breakfast. I'm on shift in an hour. And I hope it stops raining by then. This is the state of our saloon. Shit everywhere. Who could live in this for two weeks? Not me. <laughs> oh hi, I didn't see you there. I was just uh, trimming the mainsail of Bacchus here. Out here on these long passages, you've got a lot of downtime. A lot of time staring at the horizon and thinking about life. <coughs> so I've got a song here that uh, puts a few of those kind of thoughts you have about life out there on the passage together. I just hope this kind of song can bring a bit of morale to the crew. It's a song called Life. Man much wiser than me once said, Life is like a box of chocolates. like a whole lot of other things That's like a box of chocolates you might think Life is like sitting on a snake Sooner or later it's gonna bite you in the ass Life is like a pseudo-boo puzzle It's difficult and ultimately pointless Crazy, try to do it alone. Life is like a movie, Titanic. What the hell that stands?
That is life. So I ended up doing all the grinding while Ben focused on keeping the crew spirits up. Most of the sailing we've been doing is just downwind and doesn't require any changes of sails but I think today we might be doing a setup change. What's the story guys? Uh, yeah, we're just struggling to get back as balanced going downwind. We've got a following sea that's on the quarter which is slewing us around a bit. Um, and we don't have a great downwind setup. We've got a, an oversized Genoa and then we've got quite a small number four. So getting the boat balanced is tricky. Um, and we've only got one spinnaker pole so we're using the boat hook as a stand-in pole at the moment. And yeah, it's not perfect. So, so Kiwi. There's a lot of thinking going on at the moment. We're looking at a lot of numbers and um, we're trying to work out what they mean and we don't know what they mean. We don't so have a game plan yet. Not yet. We're right, considering a jibe but... Shall I come back in half an hour? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Alright. Decisions been made to change the poles, change the jibs over. So it's halfway day today, woohoo! And what's really cool is if we have a look down at our navigation station, you can see on the plotter that we are literally in the middle of nowhere. And it's something we can't really get the perspective out on deck because every day we see the same horizon and the same like 10 miles out each direction. So you don't really see that you're in the middle of nowhere. But what's cool is looking at our little map here and that's us in the middle here literally as far away from land as we could possibly be. So we're going to celebrate with some pancakes and some rum. Thoughts on the pancakes? Terrible! <laughs> happy there? Halfway day pancakes. So happy. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Day 12. I'm on the sunrise. Watch. The sun's coming up behind me. Boys are both down below having a snooze. Um, I'm having my first cup of tea for the day. And it's a really nice time of the day, sun, sunrise. Watch. You're just on your own. Sun comes up. And then the waves are still pretty messy, but. It's a really nice time of the day just to sit and relax in the quiet. We designed our own watch system for the Atlantic Crossing so I thought I'd try and explain how our watch system works. Um, we're basically on, on three different watches that we just rotate through. Uh, the sunrise watch, the noon watch and the galley watch. So the sunrise watch um, is which I'm on now. It starts at 4, 4 a.m. till 8 a.m. Um, a four hour shift and then you're off for eight hours. And then you're back on um, at 4, 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. that night. Then you have four hours off and then you're on again from midnight to 4 a.m and then you're off for eight hours. So then the next day you're on the, the noon shift, the noon watch, which starts at lunchtime. So you're on from midday, 12 till four. And then you have four hours off 
and then you're on again from 8 p.m. till midnight. Then you have eight hours off from, from there. And the third watch is the, the galley watch. So you start at 8 a.m. in the morning and you only do the four, four hours that day, eight till 12. You clock off at lunchtime and that's it for you for the day. Um, but you are on galley, so that means that you need to fix the, the food for the crew. So you'll uh, cook up a lunch after your shift and then obviously clean up the galley after that. And then sometime before the sun sets in the evening, which is usually around sort of 6.37, um, you'll put together the, the dinner for the crew and it's always, always nice to eat dinner at sunset. And then yeah, you just clean up the galley again and you're off um, and you're not back onto a watch until 4am in the morning where you're back on the sunrise and you do the whole rotation all over again. So it works quite well for us. Fast sailing conditions uh, at the moment. Uh, we've got uh, about 22, 23 knots of uh, a northeasterly right behind us. And um, we've got uh, quite a big sea that's built up, um, but Bacchus is surfing along, the hydrovane's doing a great job steering. Uh, we've still got the same sail set up, just the two headsails, uh, so we're making really good ground to the east. So it's bumpy, but it's fast, it's good fun. We're going to the east? Shit! I thought we were going to the west! To the west, to the west, to the west. <laughs> Who's navigating this boat? <laughs> So take advantage of the fresh water when you can, have a wash. Today we've had a bit of a different weather system coming through, we've had squall after squall. So um, we keep taking the sails in and out, um, and there's one on the way here. Yeah, you can just see it coming up behind us now. So there'll be about another 10 or 15 knots of wind in it, and some rain. They usually last about 10 minutes or so and then they blow over us. Blue skies again. Yeah. yeah, that's that squall gone through. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, how are you feeling coming to the end of your second week on the Atlantic crossing? I feel like I'm settling into it now. Um, I kind of thought that it would take a couple of days to settle in, but it's taken longer than that for me. I've felt a lot more relaxed the last few days, just about the boat running itself and about my crew being able to run the boat while I'm asleep. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's nice. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty comfortable now with this little routine. Sort of eat, sleep, sail the boat, rinse and repeat. Biggest upset and biggest surprise of the trip so far? Well, everyone knows my upset. I'm, I absolutely gutted about the fishing situation. And Ben and I tried to be clever and put two lures out, one on each side of the boat, thinking that might double our chances. And the lures caught each other and then turned into this massive bird's nest. <laughs> of tangled lines that I attempted all morning to undo and then gave up and had to cut them. So now we've got one lure out, it's been out for 13 days and we've got zero fish so that's definitely my biggest disappointment. What's the other part of the question? Biggest surprise or you know? Oh surprise. Good, good point. Oh, our water has lasted a really long time and I think maybe because the boys are not drinking and not washing but um, we, our, we started on our smallest water tank which starts sputtering at 65 litres and it, it lasted us like 12 days, three of us. So we've just moved on to a new water tank so I'm really surprised about that. So I'm just guzzling the water, going hard on it, washing my hair today and everything. I was going to say, how do you keep your hair looking so luscious <laughs> oh, well, today? It's looking amazing. It won't happen overnight but it will happen. Uh, I'm very painfully washed my hair over the back of the boat this morning. <laughs> but I'm finally getting through this book Shantaram, which I started reading seven years ago. <laughs> we get to Barbados, oh, what are you most looking forward to? Oh look, it's just going to be crazy. <laughs> carnage! <laughs> it's going to be carnage. Now as soon as we see land, I'm actually just going to jump off the boat. <laughs> and get away from these two. <laughs> <laughs> 
mean, there's been Job a few. mate, you'll be pushed off. There'll be, there's a few moments where I've just wanted to go now, you know. <laughs> What's stopping you? We're certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it'd be awesome to get there. Um, sense of achievement, I think, really. Uh, and a bit of freedom back on land. Bit of dirt. Board to. Terra firma. Alright, that's Ben Rowles. Day 13, out. Talk us through this new game. <laughs> It's called the Floracle. <laughs> Flo is the Oracle. And if she points to starboard, she says it means yes. And if she points to support, it means no. So we ask her a question. So yeah. we say, Flo, what do you do you think Ash's new hairstyle is great? Oh, 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 oh. No! Flo doesn't <laughs> like it! <laughs> you go, you have a turn. Do I need a shower? <laughs> Yes, Ben needs a shot! <laughs> oh, this is good. I like it. You want to ask a question to Floracle? Mm-hmm. Uh, Flo, should I make coffee now or make coffee later? No, it has to be a yes or no answer. Flo, should I make coffee now? No, Flo, oh, Flo. Oh, oh, a little bit. Yes! <laughs> yeah, we were waiting for the correct answer there. <laughs> Liberal interpretation. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think she wants you to make coffee now. Mm. <laughs> Exciting morning here on Bacchus. Hey. Buckets or something. Good, listen. What have we got? It's going to get away. Ah. Hey! Woohoo! You got a fish, Danny. You got a fish! <laughs> hey, little fish! Holy crap! <laughs> Finally! I never thought it would happen. Hey buddy! So what's happening here today then? Well, bought this uh, drone in Tenerife and we thought if the conditions were suitable we might give it a go at sea. Um, but it's really just been a case of procrastinating about doing it and wondering whether it's possible in the prevailing winds. So. What do you think your chances are of uh, losing the drone on first attempt? Significant? No, I'd say it's uh, I'd, I'd go with about 20%. Oh yeah, that's pretty strong. Yeah. So what is the maximum wind strength you can take the drone out in? It says 10 metres a second, which is up 20 knots by my rough erroneous calculations. Um, and what are we doing at the moment? Must be about it's around seven, eight, nine right. at the moment, so that maths checks out. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> Alrighty. Alrighty. Alrighty, right. Here we go. I'm gonna put myself on up here. What am I forgetting? <laughs> here we go, Ben. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you when to go with. Okay. So I might get it pulling a bit first. Yeah. Okay, do you want to have a catch? Sure. Okay, you want to do, okay, yeah. As expected, the hardest part by far was landing the drone on Bacchus as she lurched from side to side. <laughs> Bit of a roll here, just yeah, on fire. Nice brother. You got it! Got him! Woohoo! Hey! Oh cool! <laughs> Whoa, underneath the rock! <laughs> <laughs> that 
So after a very busy day catching a fish and flying our drone, we watched the dolphins on the bow as the sun set once again over the horizon. Getting really close now. Um, we've got 384 miles to go. Uh, and as forecast, the wind has dropped off. Um, but we're still able to sail. Um, we're just moving quite slowly downwind. Uh, we've got about uh, four knots of boat speed. And uh, yeah, we're about three days out from Barbados now, so it looks like we'll get there on uh, Boxing Day. And then I can't wait to just do something on stable ground. <laughs> Anything. Even tying up Christmas decorations, it's just that little bit harder. <laughs> what are you doing? Just a little bit frazzled in the kitchen, <laughs> being rolled around by these waves. Just what making, are you making in the kitchen? Just making some scrambled eggs for breakfast. Ah, yum. And I'm going to get started with all my Christmas jobs. Making uh, Christmas loaf, some fresh bread, um, and a few other bits and pieces for tomorrow. We've got a steak defrosting. Steak is defrosting. Yeah, it's beautiful. Ah. <laughs> we should get, put some goggles on and just look down. That'll be quite good. <laughs> Whee! Merry Christmas! How's your Christmas day going, Ben? Pretty festive. We've got the decorations up. We've had a few uh, kind of Christmas stockings this morning. Santa came all the way out here. Yeah. And uh, yes, the drinks are being served. I'm on watch, as you can tell, so I'm not doing anything. And uh, we've got a plans for a big lunch, steak lunch, or late lunch, you know, Christmas lunch. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Oh. the ocean thank you for our safe passage bless this food and the good company that we share it in i mean tell us what happened this morning then this morning i spent an hour staring at the horizon and then decided i was looking at land mm. land ho if we get in before 2 30 it'll be uh 19 days since we left Tenerife. 19 days and, and a few hours, which is a pretty impressive crossing, I think, for a 36 foot boat. One that was very heavily loaded. And mixed emotions on board last night, the, the last kind of sunset, last sunrise at sea this morning. Mm. We're all wondering how we're gonna feel stepping off the boat. It's probably gonna be an intense feeling of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Waves of relief. But it's not over yet. Um, this is the, this is sort of the, the trickiest part of any passage, I think, is arriving in a new place. Um, sailing bit is, is easy. Uh, so we've now got to clear the north end of Barbados. Uh, there's a couple of reefs that we've got to watch out for there. And uh, we'll get round to the other side of the island and then we've got to make our way into Port St. Charles. 
It's flag time. Two flags. Woohoo! Ready? Yeah. Here we go. It's a funny sort of bag of emotions that I've got at the moment. We're just um, closing in on the coast of Barbados and sort of equal parts uh, achievement and um, relief, I guess, that we're here and that we've made it and nothing too bad's gone wrong. Boat's all in one piece, crew are all in one piece. Um, yeah, we've only got a few more miles to go before we'll be in uh, Port St Charles. So that's a view you don't see out the window at, in the ocean crossing. Let's try out this Caribbean water for the first time. Ready, three, two, one, go! Ah! Woohoo! <laughs> oh man! That is so nice! <laughs> oh. So after 19 days at sea, we stepped ashore the beautiful island of Barbados. A huge shout out to Ben Wells who provided the laughs and kept us sane throughout this adventure. Join us on our next episode as we begin to explore the Caribbean. <laughs> We're trying to make over the vlog here. <laughs> Try again. Okay. Um, we have not caught Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Paleontologists. <laughs> it's true. <Yes. laughs> Very good point. We've got the lure out. We might still catch them. Do you reckon that'll make the final cut? <laughs>